Merhaba arkadaşlar, hepiniz IFT Talk Söbünerlerine hoş geldiniz. Bugün ABD'nin en iyi teknik okulu Stevens Institute of Technology'den Marina bizlere eğitimi anlatıyor olacak. Lütfen sorularınızı questions kısmından sormayı unutmayın. Yes Marina, the stage is yours now. Thank you all so much for having me. Uh, my name is Marina and I am uh, one of the advisors here at Stevens Graduate, uh, Stevens Institute of Technology at the Graduate Admissions Office. And today we're going to really just dive into the different um, graduate study programs that's available to you and why STEM is really an important field to be getting into. So without further ado, we'll go ahead and get started. So more specifically, the topic is the benefits of earning a STEM degree in the United States. So first we want to go into why a STEM degree. And STEM stands for Science, Technology, Engineering, and Mathematics. So it covers really a lot of different types of programs. So let's look at the evolution at the growth of technology in the past uh, 20 years. So as you can see back in 2001, um, Microsoft really was the only leading tech company. Um, it was one of the sec second biggest companies. Um, and then as you see down the chart that in 2018, and I'm sure not much has changed in 2021, um, all the major companies are all technology um, at its core. You have Apple, you have um, Microsoft, Google, Amazon, all of these companies who are just growing more and more each day rely on such a deep technical and analytical core, uh, which you know, allows for a lot of job growth, especially here in the United States, um, with all of these companies being started here and have their headquarters here. So really, in you know, just considering where the world is going, you know, tech is having some sort of tech background, especially if it's in your core skills, is only going to benefit you and help you constantly be relevant in the times and where they're going. So another plus about a STEM program is that it gives you the transferable technical and management skills. So certainly, yes, you will have the technical skills you need, whether you're doing something in engineering or data analysis or cybersecurity, whatever you decide to choose, yes, you will have those tech skills. But, you know, arguably just as important or more important is you are going to be getting the management skills as well. Um, and that's what's really going to give you an edge in such a competitive world in the tech and STEM uh, arenas. You know, you need to be able to leverage the age, you know, platforms, different networks and using different types of intelligence. Um, you know, that's one thing that you're going to need. You're also going to need to know how to connect with people on the digital, social, even physical level still. Um, you know, the language of different types of social media platforms that's super important to produce and also be able to analyze that kind of data, which leads me to the next point of age of data, um, you know, just using different types of tools to see how the company, where the company is, how it can grow, you know, because ultimately that's how you can stay relevant. How can you contribute to a company, to its growth, um, its stability and its involvement? So, you know, STEM programs at its core really allows for groundbreaking and life-changing research. And we see this, you know, with our most, you know, biggest news that we've heard about and probably might be sick of hearing about is COVID. Um, this is a classic example. We have this, you know, new virus. It is unknown. It's not familiar. Yet within the past year, we were able to produce a vaccine. There's two, you know, Moderna has one, Pfizer has one now, Johnson and Johnson's coming out with one. And it's just very interesting to see how each vaccine has its pros and its cons. But behind all of this, it shows you how, you know, here at this table, it shows you just from start to finish how we we're able to get to the solution. You know, we have, we had to collect data. We had to, okay, understand the virus a little bit better. And then from there we had to make decisions. And then from there we had to design it, you know, and that's why, and even if you look at the two vaccines, you know, it's very interesting. I think if I remember correctly, the Pfizer one has to be um, kept at very clo um, cold temperatures and it can't be exposed early, but you know, Moderna's is different. And you know, this is not like to vouch for a vaccine. It's just to really just explain how design decisions um, all come into play through data analysis 
eventually, you know, with the goal to serve the community or the world somehow by providing a certain product or service. So, um, you know, and then ultimately being in the STEM field that with all the research that you do and what you contribute, you are doing, you know, hopefully something good for those, you know, for the world, for the community, the country, um, which is always rewarding at the end of the day. But yeah, the STEM with these skills, with the technical skills and the management skills, this is the kind of cycle you're going to be finding yourself in one way or another, no matter what your specific field is. And ultimately, and just as important, is the career opportunities that are ahead of you with a STEM degree. Um, you know, for example, the U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics says that employment in STEM-related occupations is expected to grow uh, to more than 9 million by 2022, and I am certain that it is going to continue growing way past 2022. Um, you know, overall, the STEM employment would grow about 13%, like, really in the past 10 years, 20, from 2012 to 2022. So hopefully, you know, within the next year, we'll continue to grow. Um, again, this is where the world is heading and geared to. So, you know, I think here in the US, we're very fortunate to have such strong leading companies. Um, there's just growth for big companies and small companies here. And especially for our international students, they do so well here with finding jobs, um, especially at Stevens, because at the graduate level, we are about 60 to 70 percent international students. So we are we've learned, you know, in the past, like, you know, many decades, how to cater to international students, their needs, um, how to connect them with jobs and their, uh, land them the internships and experiences that they need so that they can maximize um, on their on your OPT. So you can work and stay in the U.S. for those three years and gain the experience, make good money. And then from there, you can decide, you know, do I want to go back home or do I, you know, want to stay here? So, again, our international students, especially at Stevens, we've seen lots of great success, um, which is super important for us. So, um, and again, you know, another statistic is more than 90% of the Fortune Global uh, 100 and 500 companies hire MBA talent in 2019. So. You know, the STEM programs, there's, at least at Stevens, there's an option to do a dual degree. You could do your STEM program along with the MBA, save yourself some credits and time um, with the special dual degree program. But, you know, if you decide not to do the MBA, you still do get exposure to certain classes that teach you um, core management skills that you can carry with you. So now that we kind of have an idea on why you should choose STEM, we want to go into more how to choose the right STEM program for you. So what I'm going to do is really just give you a few tips to remember and consider when you're doing your research to see what kind of, you know, the school that you want to go to. I mean, of course, we hope that you end up choosing Stevens. Um, but the first tip really is to see you want to make sure that your university or college is a STEM designated school. And you will see that on their website. Um, you know, the website is going to be a huge core um, resource for you to use to learn about your different schools. So you want to make sure that first it is STEM designated. Um, and if it's not, you know, Stevens is an entirely designated STEM school, um, but you just want to also look more specifically to make sure that the program you're choosing is a STEM designated program. So for example, at Stevens, um, although like about 95% of our programs are STEM, you know, the MBA, the traditional Stevens MBA is not a STEM program, although we offer the analytics MBA, which is. Um, but again, you just want to make sure that the school and the program is STEM designated so that you can take advantage of the um, CPT and OPT, which we'll dive into a little bit later. Um, so yeah, that's the first step. And this is just an example. Um, at Stevens, we have three different schools. We have our School of Business, and then we have our School of Schaefer of Engineering and Science and Systems and Enterprises. So under these two schools, these are just um, a very short, it's not the exhaustive list of programs that we offer, but these are all STEM designated. So, you know, if you look on 
my left side of the screen, I guess, you have all the different types of engineering. And then you go into more of like the cybersecurity and the computer science related fields. And then you have, um, the, you know, the more hardcore mathematics and physics. Um, and then you have things also like software engineering and systems engineering. And this is, again, these are all like the hot fields. This is where the job market is growing exponentially. Um, so these are just examples, you know, see what you like, what you're interested in, what kind of career you see yourself doing for years down the line and what you want to grow in. And that's a good start to kind of, you know, pinpoint at least the area that you want to dive into. So as I mentioned, we have our third school, which is the School of Business. And um, these are all the programs offered in the School of Business. And I myself am a student, uh, I'm an MBA student. Um, but you can see here that the ones highlighted or circled in red, those are the STEM designated. So there's only three that are not. But if you were interested in the MBA, for example, you do have the option to do the analytics MBA, which um, you know focuses more on the data analysis, uh, but you still do get a great exposure to management as well, which is important. And then you have other things like the finances, uh, information systems, which is huge, um, network management, which is more geared towards if you wanted to work with you know, certain phone companies like Verizon and um, T-Mobile, at least these are examples that we have here in the US. Um, you know, BIA, business intelligence, analytics, another huge big data um, course. Uh, this School of Business has grown a lot in the past 30 years um, and has gained lots of accreditation. We're really proud of where we've got, um, come. And overall in Stevens, you know, as you all know, we've all had to deal with COVID one way or another, but I am so proud personally. Uh, you know, our graduating class in May of 2020, there was a 2% increase in our international, well, all of our students, but as I mentioned, most of them are international, uh, finding a job. So, you know, of course, during, you know, the height of a pandemic where no one really understands, like, what's going on, where the world is going to be, we saw at Stevens a 2% job match increase. I mean, that is huge. You know, I don't want you to think, oh, like, it's only 2%. I mean, just consider the circumstances, you know, like, jobs were letting people go left and right everyone was shutting down their offices everything was remote yet you know being a school that you know we've been doing online studies and you know we've been doing zoom and remote for before it was a thing and to get all these students a job placement increasingly during a pandemic it really just shows you the value of a stem degree um, a good education and going to a good school and of course, networking, which I talk about all the time and how important it is to network. But I just wanted to share that because it's something that I'm so proud of, you know, being a part of. And I think it, it really is just a huge testimony to um, how important it is to invest in your education, especially in something like STEM. So I mentioned earlier, I keep saying CPT and OPT. And for those who are not familiar with what these are, um, you have your CPT, which stands for the curriculum practical training and your OPT, which is your occupational practical training. And these are two different things, but they are related to anyone who needs um, or is in the United States on an F1 visa or some, some sort of um, student visa. So the CPT is what I would equate to an internship basically during your studies and the OPT is the job that you work after you graduate for up to three years um, in the United States. So, okay, so some, so the one thing you wanna look at is you, sorry, <laughs> the one thing you wanna first consider is you wanna see how long your program of interest is. And this could vary, you know, some programs could be one year, some could be two semesters, three semesters, four semesters, what have you. But typically it's usually, um, three to four semesters. Well, at least at Stevens, um, most of our programs, they're two years, so they're four years, uh, sorry, four semesters long. Um, but again, that also depends on your course load. So a lot of these programs, if you wanted to finish a little bit earlier, you can complete in three years. So the reason why you wanna look into seeing when, how long your program is and you know what options you have with how quickly um, you can complete it if you wanted to you know, expedite your studies 
which you could certainly do. This is important because this is going to determine the placement of when you're eligible for your OPT and um, when you can start your CPT. So, for example, after your after completing two semesters in the United States or one year of studies, then you can start applying for your CPT, which is like your internship. Okay, you must complete these two semesters in order to be eligible for a CPT. Okay. And then, so that's why it's important because if your uh, program is only one year long, that means you're not gonna do a CPT, you're gonna dive into right away your OPT because you would have already graduated and now you can start your three year extra stay in the United States working. But if your program is three or four semesters long, after you complete your two semesters, your one year, in between your first and second year is going to be your CPT opportunity. And then after you complete your second year, then you go into your OPT, your occupational practical training. So I hope that kind of clears it up. It's really just, you know, gauging your timeline of when you're going to start your CPT and OPT. The second tip um, you want to look into is the location of your school. Um, and as you know, the United States is huge. Um, and depending on the industry that you're looking for, there's certain areas of the United States where you have like major headquarters in. And here in New Jersey and in the tri-state area, which is New Jersey, New York, um, Pennsylvania, and the Connecticut area, all these, I mean, I mentioned four states, but in, the, in this region in general, it's super metropolitan and there's a lot of big companies here with headquarters. So for example, if you are interested in working in a pharmaceutical, in the pharmaceutical industry, and you can, you don't, you know, doesn't mean you have to be a pharmacist, but you could do analysis for them, marketing, engineering, system you know stem can be applied into every single type of field which is awesome because it gives you so much flexibility so as i mentioned in new jersey we have so many um head uh pharmaceutical headquarters here which is you know something we're proud of because we have pfizer here um so we got to see a lot of the progress with the vaccines but anyway so if this was like one uh field you wanted to get into you know you want to look in this area in the new jersey area for example um, Texas is another state that has been growing with a lot of big headquarters with Google. Um, you know, that's one example. Tesla has moved, had just recently moved to tech, uh, moved a headquarter into Texas. So again, you just, you know, you just want to see like what kind of network you want to have and see what the school can offer you. And that doesn't mean you're limited to only, you know, this state or that state. The most important thing is to see the location that you have, because just because you have a great education in, in New Jersey, it doesn't limit you just to this area. You can work anywhere with the um, with the network that you build. And the great thing is that because we are so close to New York, um, we have built such a dynamic um, network for our students so that you can take advantage of knowing people um, across the states. And of course, you know, being in such a big industrial hub you know you have the city you have the finance that you the financial district you have different 500 uh fortune 500 companies that all work here you know these are the same companies that have branches across the united states so it just gives you so much leeway so this particular area the new jersey um, new york metropolitan area is fruitful to you no matter where you decide to take your life afterwards if you want to go back home if you want to stay here if you want to go to a different area in the u.s the network here is impeccable and it is really unlike many areas in the US. So that's certainly something that you do wanna consider. The next thing you wanna look into is the services. And this is what's going to help build your network essentially. So I talk about network in every, every single one of my presentations because it is just as important as the education and the skills that you're gonna obtain through the program. So some of the services I'm talking about, first of all is the career services. You know, you do wanna look into the statistics. What are the job placements? What's the diversity of the school? You know, do they have mostly domestic students or do they lean more towards international? Of course, you know, schools with a bigger international student body have really nailed being able to assist students in their, you know, at Stevens, we train our students very well. We teach them how to, what to expect in an interview, how to um, how to dress, the, you know, what kind of questions to expect. We really walk you through this so that you are not alone because we understand, you know, moving from a 
different country into the United States, it can be scary and overwhelming, but we don't want you to feel like that. We want you to be prepared, um, especially for your career, because grad school is a big investment. There's no denying that. Um, and we want to make sure that you capitalize on this investment and you are getting what we call the top ROI, the return on investment. We want to make sure that your degree is worth it. And I think we do a good job at that here at Stevens. Um, so your career services, you want to look into that, see their placements, what their body, student bodies like, um, what kind of, what do they do? You know, at Stevens, we offer three to four times a year, typically, um, oh, what's it called? Ooh, a career fair, sorry. Uh, which is an excellent way to network. So this is just an example to you know get your mind going on what you should be looking for. The second thing is the student life. Um, student life is super important. I think you know when you're moving here, you're you are leaving your friends, you are leaving your family, and it's very important that you be a part of the school community. Okay, you need to for many reasons. One is the social aspect. You know you need to you do need a healthy balance of your study and social life. I Think that's very important um so that's one part of it another part of it is again it's another continuation or format of networking the students the other students your classmates that you meet you know this builds your network the faculty and professors that you deal with you know that's another way to network and the student life program invites you and exposes you to different clubs and different um faculty like there's different academic clubs and there's different social and um cultural clubs as well you know at stevens we do have quite a handful of turkish students um, many of which actually join us at the phd level so i have to say our our incoming turkish students that come are quite brilliant um we love our students that come from turkey but yeah there's you know you want to make sure that you are you know getting involved and also enjoying your american experience here going on trips and you know thank god you know, with the vaccines we're moving at a much promising pace uh to normalcy so we're hoping that we can you know continue doing that and even during the pandemic you know student life was so good at um offering a lot of online um events and networking opportunities and getting to meet other people and they were very good with that so you know that that's something that we're also very proud of and then another service i like to mention um or department at least is we call it the ISSS office at stevens these are the people that produce your i-20 and deal with all the visa related inquiries these you know the people that work in this department you talk to them before a live arrival and then leading up to graduation because everything relates back to your visa you know when you do your opt when you can graduate like graduation dates all this stuff is related to visa and i-20 so these are other people that you do want to make sure you're you know on good terms with and like talking to you and like getting all the information that you need because they're going to be a huge part of your entire stem study experience in the us and last but not least um, is the infrastructure and what we mean by this is see what kind of you know labs the schools offer you know at stevens for example we have two financial labs um we call them the hanlon labs and it is very cool because one of them the one on the on the second floor in our how building it looks exactly like a mini wall street um office you have the ticker sign on the top and it, you have all this really high tech um you have the uh high tech tools like the bloomberg material uh, the bloomberg terminals for example um so in the financial classes you guys are going to be using a lot of these things so we have all different types of labs and projects you know for the engineers for all the programs and across the schools so you want to look into that you know what kind of research has the school recently done what kind of tool, resources and labs do they offer? Because, you know, if a school is truly STEM, it's, it needs to keep up with the times and offer like the latest technology, basically. So these are things, again, that you want to keep look into and see. And this is, all, I think, between the four of the, you know, key points that I just listed, you will be able to make a confident um, and right decision to see what is a good fit for you, because that's, you want to make sure you're making a good decision for you um, based on your needs and your you know, goals for your future. And to wrap up, um, I hope you guys are finding this a little beneficial at least. I wanted to just share with you just 
testimonies from some of our international students that have somewhat recently graduated. So we asked these three students uh, two questions. You know, why did you do, use a STEM program and how has it helped you? And the first person is Andres. He's from Venezuela. And he graduated, you know, a few years ago, back in 2014, which isn't too long ago. And he said that, you know, he chose STEM because it was an opportunity to focus on what he really liked after his undergraduate education. And then he said it's helped him because he was able to pursue opportunities within my graduate programs field with confidence and proof of my investment in this new career path. And I've said this time and time again, you know, you want to make sure that you, you know, for your program studies, you know, it is an investment and you do want to make sure that it is worth your while. And then we have Tushara, um, and she graduated more recently in 2018. She said, STEM program has allowed her to work with new technologies and to learn how to use them to analyze data. And, you know, being a student here, this is so true. You learn, diff you get exposed to different softwares like SAS, um, you know, Python, R, Tableau is a really cool one. These are all different tools that you can use to analyze data. And actually in one of our classes, um, it's called marketing analytics. This was a really cool class because we had to, we had to sign a non-disclosure agreement and we had to take, so I can't tell you who the company was, but it was a huge grocery store chain that we have in the United States and they gave us their data and we had to analyze it using SAS at the time. And we had to, basically present to them and create a presentation, you know, these products made you the most money, you should, you know, give these more exposure, these products didn't do so well. So we just had to really break down like what items were making sales and which items weren't. And it was a very cool experience. Um, and it's something at the end of the day, you can even use on your resume, you know, this is a research opportunity, and you can talk about it, you know, in your interviews this is it's all very valuable the experience just the knowledge itself that you obtain the experience that you get and then being able to talk about it in your interviews and using that as um you know you could use it as part of your resume as i mentioned um moving along this is brian um he's the last testimony i wanted to share but he's one of our recent graduates in may 2020 so he was part of our two percent increase of job matches um he said he chose the STEM program because he's a lover of fixing things, of building things and solving problems. And STEM helps him find the root of problems and allow him to build and create a solution, which perfectly ties in the, you know, the beginning intro of why a STEM program. And then he said, how has STEM helped him? He says, it's improved his problem solving skills. My classes and projects exposed me to learn and gain different types of critical thinking skill sets. And the hands-on experience was an instrumental was instrumental to learning and applying those experiences at work, which I hope my example of the marketing analytics class is kind of painted for you. So in conclusion, um, the sky truly is the limit with STEM. Um, it is the future. You know, it's in demand now. I, it's going to be in demand for a long time. And most importantly, it's versatile. It gives you so much flexibility no matter what your interests are. It can be used, you know, there's so many different STEM opportunities and it can be applied to all types of industries and, you know, different types of careers, which is amazing. And my last tip for you um, is that you want to look into the events, you know, now that we are Zoom, uh, Zoom, now that we are, <laughs> I use Zoom all the time, now that we are in a very virtual world and we use all these different platforms, um, a lot of schools, especially at Stevens, we host so many different types of open houses and webinars. And this is a great way, you know, I highly encourage you to sign up and register for different events, you know, like this one, for example, because it's going to give you a lot of important information. And also, uh, they, you know, at Stevens, because you joined this event, we will waive your $60 application fees. So you won't have to pay that, um, you know, as long as you use the same email that you registered for this event for creating your application. If you don't, it's okay, like I'll waive it for you, just don't pay it. But you know, th there's just so many benefits. There is like the financial aspect where you get to waive your applic application fee, but also um, learning, you know, meeting different faculty and learning what the programs have to offer uh, from the faculty and from different advisors, which is important. So definitely take a look at the events web pages. And of course, um, I'm going to leave my 
our social media all up here. This is another great way to connect with any university. Um, you can hit them up on Facebook or Instagram. Um, this is just a good way to chat and, you know, even just to find a quick way to connect with others. So I encourage you to look at social media pages. And with that, I will leave my email here. Um, the graduate is a general inbox email, which you can certainly apply to, but I would love if you guys would email me directly. Uh, you'll get a faster response, and I would love to connect with you personally. Um, and Amanda Mendez, uh, she couldn't join us today, but she's our associate director who I work closely with, and she loves connecting with our IEFT students as well. And I will stop sharing now, but I will be sure to uh, type my email again in the chat. Um, let me just pull up the camera. Okay, here we are. All right. I feel like I've talked your ears off, but I hope that you guys found this super interesting um, and helpful at least. And then we can um, dive into the questions if you guys like. I see that there's a few here. So. Let's take a look. All right, we'll start from the bottom and work our way up to the top. Okay, great. Um, so the first question is, what is the difference between OPT and CPT, and is there any working duration between them? Great question. So um, the CPT is what is equal to an internship. So you'd only do that for um, like one summer, for example. So you would work this in the summer between your first year and your second year. And in order to work your CPT, so I'll just call it an internship just to use different letters. So your CPT internship, basically, you have to, you can only pursue it and apply for it and work it uh, legally with your visa after completing your first two semesters or one year of studies. So typically, um, you'll do that in, in the summer between your first year and your second year. So that's what the CPT is. It's just a temporary internship-like work experience. The OPT is a more long-term because after you graduate, the STEM designated visas give you uh, legal permission, so to say, to work and stay in the United States for three years after graduation. So that's your occupational um, practical training. Your OPT, that's more of your long-term work here which you can use to work on the same visa for three years in the United States. And then after those three years are up, after you've worked for three years, you either, you know, that's when you decide, okay, do I want to go back home or do you want to stay here? And then at that point you would, you know, if you're still working, which most of our students are, um, you get a visa sponsored by your workplace. So I hope that clarifies it. Um, so your OPT is just a more long-term um, job position in the United States, which you get after graduation, your CPT is more of a temporary seasonal internship-like experience that you work in the summer in between during your studies in between your first and second year. Okay, is there a uh, partner tech companies that we can do an internship with after we graduate? Um, yes, there is so many different big tech companies that we work with. Uh, Facebook has hired a lot from us. Um, it really just depends like what kind of action, like what kind of company you're looking to work with. Uh, the sun is rising now. <laughs> it just, this is something that you would have to work closely with your academic advisor. Um, they'll tell you, you know, what's available. This, um, the Career Center is another networking or another resource that you want to reach out to. So we have, a, as I mentioned, you know, our network is very extensive. We work with a lot of big companies. So getting you an interview, um, preparing you for it for tech companies is easy, especially because we are a tech school. Um, so it just it's just a matter of you inquiring and you know preparing for these interviews with your classes, making sure you're learning your skills, and also preparing your resume with your academic advisor and the career services center. Okay. Great question. Um, so what are Steven's criteria for selecting master's students? Um, all of our requirements are on our website, so you can always fall back to that. But right now, if you wanted to apply for the fall 21 intake, I encourage you to do so because the GRE right now is optional for the master's level only. It is not the case for all the PhD programs, if that was what you're interested in, but at the master's 
you know, I mean, I know you're specifically asking for masters, but right now, as I mentioned, the GRE is optional, so um, it can be waived. And in general, you know, we want we look at your application holistically. So yeah, you you want to make sure that you are competitive, especially because we do offer academic merit based scholarships. So we will only give you a scholarship if you're truly if your application is exceptional. So, you know, you want to make sure your grades are strong. And if your grades are not strong, you know, it's okay. That doesn't mean you don't have a chance to get in. But in order to strengthen your application, you know, I would consider taking the GRE, for example, to kind of make up for that. Um, we do, of course, require a language exam. So now we accept three, uh, TOEFL and IELTS. And now we also accept Duolingo, which can be taken at home. Uh, so, which just kind of makes things a little bit easier with everything going on. So there, the, for the GRE, sorry to go back to it, there's no minimum required score, although we like to see on average a 300 or higher. But again, if you want to be competitive and try to get a scholarship, you want to score well, especially for, you know, these STEM designated programs, you're, you want a quanti strong quantitative score. Um, and of course you want, you know, equally a strong verbal score. But just keep that in the back of your mind. And then with the language courses, the language tests, there are minimum requirements. TOEFL is 74, IELTS is six, and the Duolingo is 100. So you have to meet at least these numbers or higher in order to uh, have your application even reviewed. So, and then of course you need your two letters of recommendations, um, a statement of purpose. This all helps build your application so that you can give us a holistic view of who you are and what you've accomplished. Um, what is the SAT score required? That I'm not too sure. I do believe it is also optional for the fall 21 intake as well. Um, feel free to email me and I can connect you with my colleagues from the undergraduate admissions um, just because they would know. I Unfortunately, I only represent them at uh, graduate level, but I'm more than happy to connect you and they can give you all that info. Do you offer a conditional acceptance letter um, if we can't reach the required English level or GMAT score? This is a great question. So we do have a conditional um, acceptance, but it's not the kind that, it's not what you're thinking of. Um, so the way the admissions works at Stevens is you will only get an admission of any type once you've submitted all the required documents. So you cannot be, Typically, you will not be accepted unless we receive all of the documents, like all the required materials, like the GRE, the TOEFL, et cetera, et cetera. But as I mentioned, um, for Fall 21, the GMAT and GRE are optional for the master's. So if you don't submit a score, your application will still get passed and reviewed. So, and that's also the same thing with the TOEFL. Like if you, you can't, um, be admitted without a TOEFL score and then you upload the score and then we look to see, oh, okay, you made the minimum requirement, we'll, you know, move along. It, it doesn't work like that. You need everything to be submitted and then you receive the admission. Now, when I say we do offer a conditional acceptance, it's like I said, it's not what you think where you can upload materials later, you know, receive, having already received the admission, but, you know, let's say they look at your application and they say, okay, like you're kind of, in the middle, like you have a couple weak spots. Sometimes they will admit you on a conditional basis where you have to take, for example, two or three classes and you have to get a B or an, they give you like a minimum grade requirement. So they'll usually tell you like a B or B plus or higher in order for you to stay admitted. So that is the kind of conditional um, acceptance that we require. So just to clear it up, um, you have to submit all of your required documents in order to be reviewed. Your application will not go through if something that is op not optional is missing. So like the TOEFL, uh, uh, yeah, the TOEFL and IELTS, all these materials, they need to be submitted for your application to move forward. And then you will, you know, and then let's say you get accepted. If you receive a conditional admittance, it's because they uh, are requiring you to get a certain type of letter grade and. Uh, a few core classes. So I hope that clears it up for you. But yeah, you just need to submit everything that is required um, in order to move forward. Does Stephen require letters of recommendations? Yes, uh, two of them at the master's level. So the letters of rec need to come from someone who's a superior. So either a professor or a boss or anything like of someone that's higher than you. 
that can, um, you know, write you your letter of rec. And it could be from either school or work, it doesn't matter. Which programs uh, do international students prefer mostly? Um, they always prefer anything STEM just because of the visa and getting the OPT and CPT. Um, but what I find to be more popular programs um, at Stevens, a lot of students love the information systems and business intelligence analytics degrees from the school of business. Um, and a lot of students do go into all types of engineering. And so like the, um, Electrical engineering, mechanical engineering, those are huge as well. I mean, we have so many, but from what I remember, I know these are common applications that I see. And of course, a super popular one is the computer science and cybersecurity programs as well. So it really just kind of depends what you're into. You know, these are three different categories. You have like the big data, you have um, the computer related programs, and then you have your hardcore engineering. So. You know, it's really what you like. But those are the ones that I see that are quite popular. Okay, is it possible to credit transfer from a Turkish university? This is like a case by case kind of basis. Um, when you sub, when you're working on your application, in this case, we can um, connect you with the reviewing faculty, and they will let you know um, if something can be transferred or not. So this is totally case by case. Um, I'd have to connect you with the faculty and they'll be able to answer that for you as you're applying. What's the difference between postgraduate and undergraduate? Great question. Um, so your undergraduate, at least in the United States, this is typically like a four year degree and then you graduate with your bachelor's um, degree. And this is just, uh, it's here in the United States is basically required just so you can really start work and real work and developing your career. So um, what I find is a lot of students that do their undergraduate, um, they like to then kind of specialize afterwards. So you have students that do, for example, medical school um, in their undergraduate level, they'll do something like biology or neuroscience or something that prepares them for the actual med school, which then they can specialize, you know, for their career, like what kind of studies they want to do. So at the master's and, and PhD levels, you know, a lot of students will, they'll get their undergraduate degree in whatever they like. It could be engineering, it could be political science, it could be anything. Um, and then, you know, they work and they get experience. You don't have to, you're not required, by the way, to have it work experience to apply for a master's. It does sometimes help, but it's not required. But down the line, um, to make you more competitive and to have a specialized field, a lot of students like to go into their master's, which is the postgraduate. And postgraduate could be master's or PhD. It just means after your um, undergraduate graduation. So, uh, the, so postgraduate essentially is just a specialization that you pursue um, for a certain career. So that's really what it is. Undergraduate, you have more. Um, liberation to study kind of whatever you want. And then the master's level, you kind of be, be, pick something uh, more specific for a career to gain a certain skill set. Is the GMAT or GRE required? Um, as I mentioned, for the master's level only, uh, it is optional for the fall 21 program. Um, and I said this before and I will say it again, if your grades are kind of, you know, not too strong, I taking the GRE, if you can, does it, will help you um, if you score well in it. So just like consider that, you know, have it in the back of your mind. Do you also offer a uh, diploma or certificate programs? We do offer certificates. They are um, typically four to six courses, depending on the certificate. So you can complete it depend. So at the full-time level, you can only take three to four courses a semester. So you can take a, you can, you could be able to complete a whole certificate within one semester if it's only four courses long, but if it's six courses, then it'll take about a year for you. And you can see all of these things on our website, like what's the certificate, what is a master's and what PhD programs we offer. How is the living ex expenses around New Jersey? Would you recommend to rent an apartment or, um, a host family? This is a great question. Um, so in Hoboken, where uh, Stevens is, 
Hoboken is an expensive area, I'm not going to lie, because it's right on the water and it's just like a very fancy area. So the rent there is more expensive. But a lot of our students um, go typically rent an apartment um, in the cities next to Hoboken, which are very close, like Jersey City, Washington Heights, uh, Union City. These are all examples of neighboring cities. And the good thing is that in this area, it's a very commuter friendly. So you can easily take any kind of like train or bus 15 or 20 minutes from your, your city into Hoboken. It's really easy. Um, so it is better to, you know, if Hoboken is expensive for you, I certainly encourage you to just grab an apartment with a roommate somewhere else and then just commute. It's very easy to do that in that area. Um, apartment or host family, it really just depends on what, is comfortable for you. I mean, I think finding an apartment with another Stevens uh, student is like the best. I think that's personally the best option. Um, you're with someone who understands your lifestyle, like the studying, the late nights. Um, and then you also have your own space and then you share the rent. So it makes it much more affordable with a roommate. So I would, you know, I would look into, see both look into it. Um, our graduate life department is, uh, they're the ones that really help with the setting you up and seeing your options with the living, uh, like with the living options. So they're a good way, they're good people to connect with when you're admitted. All right, nice. And then the last question is how, uh, what's the minimum GPA for masters? Um, if my GPA is lower than a two five, can I have a chance to get an acceptance with GMAT score? Great question. Um, we definitely touched on this. So GPA is like the GRE. There's no minimum requirements, although we do like to see a 3.0 or higher. So again, if you, we've accepted students who have scored lower, like had a lower than a 3.0 and certainly higher than a 3.0. So again, it's just, yeah, if you're able to take the GMAT to make up for your score and do super well on it um, and do great in the quant, definitely it's only going to help you um and it will certainly give you the the opportunity to be considered strongly for um a scholarship too so yeah um don't be discouraged if your grades are low um if you you know that's why we do have other things like the letter of recommendations like submitting a test exam because this will help strengthen your um your eligibility for sure and I did, I keep mentioning scholarships. So uh, when you apply, you don't, there's no separate application. When you submit your application, you're automatically reviewed for a scholarship. And it's an academic based scholarship. So they are looking at your whole application, your grades, your experiences, all these things. Um, and it's not a full scholarship. It is a partial scholarship. So typically it, if you get one, it covers about 20 to 30% of your tuition. It's a one-time award. And so, for example, if you get a $10,000 scholarship, it's split in half, and then $5,000 is applied to your first semester, and then the second half, $5,000 is applied to your second semester. You never, if you get a scholarship, it's never applied at once. It's always split in half and applied across the two semesters. Okay, I'm just going to go into the chat box just to see if there's any extra questions over here. All right. Okay, there's one question. What's the graduation uh, point average for the master's program? Um, I'm not too sure what you mean by, I don't know if you mean by like uh, the rate of graduation or if you mean like the grade point average, but I mean, 96% of our students do end up graduating from Stevens. So our students are very committed. Um, and if you mean like the grade point average, you know, the GPA that's we like to see a 3.0 or higher, but again, there's no requirement uh, for that. Okay. All right. I think I got all the questions covered. If anyone has any additional questions, um, feel free to type it. I'm more than happy to address it. I hope uh, you guys found this presentation helpful. Uh, let me, I want to type in. I'm going to type in my email in the chat so that you have it. I would love for you guys to connect with me. If you have any further questions, you know, don't be shy. Please definitely reach out to me. Okay, so that's my email. Um, you know, my job is to connect and answer your questions. So please do reach out. We do love our 
you know, we love working with IEFT. We love our students from Turkey. Um, I find that they do so well when they come. I mean, I said it before and I'll say it again. Our Turkish students really are so brilliant. So having you guys come and study at Stevens is a true honor for us. So with that, um, I'll pass it along to Zeynep. So if there's any other questions or if you want to do any closing remarks for us. Yes, thank you very much, Marina. Uh, we believe it was a really uh, informative webinar for the attendees and you put a real effort answering all of the questions. Thank you. Also, I would like to thank the participants in Turkish as well. Katıldığınız için teşekkür ederiz arkadaşlar. Stevens Institute of Technology ile ilgili diğer sorularınız için Marina'nın paylaşmış olduğu mail adresinden iletişime geçebilirsiniz. Aynı zamanda sizi 5'teki webinarımıza da davet etmek isteriz. Thank you again Marina. It was a pleasure to have you in IFT Talks. Thank you so much everyone. I'll see you all soon. Take care. Bye bye. Take care. Bye bye.